Let me get you to talk about, because yeah. you mentioned it, you mentioned uh, sort of uh, issues about uh, physical attractiveness and sizeism, and you've done some work on that. Tell us about the, how you got interested in that and, and what you've been finding on sizeism and anti Yeah, size acceptance. Size acceptance, yeah. Yeah. I don't know the origin of that mm -hmm. uh, completely. You know, I am... I am still a fat person, mm -hmm. and I used to be an even fatter person. Mm -hmm. So, because uh, I I lost uh, weight recently, mm -hmm. so I guess it's like I really believe that many things in our interest area mm -hmm. go back to who we are as mm -hmm. a person. Mm -hmm. So, of course, I could understand, mm -hmm. you know, size discrimination mm -hmm. in the sense that. Um, you know, when I would ride in some people's cars, they would want me to put the seatbelt on, but their seatbelt didn't really fit mm -hmm. around me. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's sort of embarrassing mm -hmm. for them to own a car yeah. <laughs> with exactly. such a small seatbelt. <laughs> but they wouldn't see it that way. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. they wouldn't see it as a problem for them. They would just think like, oh my God, she's so big, my tiny mm -hmm. little, really tight seatbelt doesn't fit around her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So on some level, I would say I have personal experience. But I think... You know, I'm sure that partly I was introduced to it mm -hmm. through um, Psychology of Women. Yeah, yeah. And my earliest work on it, um, I wrote a chapter with Beverly Goodwin and Lisa Tauster. One is my colleague, one is my student, on who is the woman in Psychology of Women. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to write that book. Mm -hmm. I, I chased them down, mm -hmm. you know, my mm -hmm. friend. I have to think a minute about her name. But mm -hmm. anyway, she had written an earlier book on mm -hmm. uh, diversity issues in psychology. And I said, oh, you, if you're going to go to press again, we want a chapter in there on psycho women. Mm -hmm. uh, because my colleague uh, Beverly had done stuff on text and whether they included African-American women in what sense. Uh -huh. And then I was interested in social class and the idea that social class wasn't really included in psycho women. And then my student... Uh, Lisa Tauster mm -hmm. had done a dissertation where she looked through both psycho women and introductory psychology textbooks mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. looked at both the pictures and the text. Okay. And uh, I, I'm not sure how we came on that topic collectively together, but uh -huh. she had done that and we put all those pieces together mm -hmm. in that chapter, which I'm very proud of, Who is the Woman in Psychology of Women? Mm -hmm. And so recent, mm -hmm. my recent work, I don't know, I mm -hmm. was part of a caucus at mm -hmm. AWP, yeah, yeah. and Esther Rothboom was the original yeah. chair, yeah. and she's a very good chair. And then that area of psychology has moved uh, rapidly forward under her leadership, and yeah. I'm sure there are other people, but she wrote the Fat Studies Reader, which mm -hmm. we, we, my student and I, wrote a book review of, mm -hmm. which just came out. And then we were also invited, because Irene is the editor of Sex Roles, mm -hmm. and there was a feminist forum piece mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. uh, weight as a gender issue uh -huh. and it was written by Rothbaum and mm -hmm. uh, a colleague Ficken mm -hmm. and so you know that's how those forums mm -hmm. work there's mm -hmm. like a starting piece and then other people read that piece and mm -hmm. either extend it or argue with it or comment on it in some way mm -hmm. so my student Ashley Casardo and I wrote a response to it Ashley is a student in my program who when I talked about size acceptance in a diversity class was very excited about it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then we started you know, talking a little bit about it, but then these opportunities came forward. Okay, right. And we're, one of the things we did was sort of, it's still somewhat informal and we're working to formalize it completely, is a replication of Tauster. So okay. 10 years later, we went back to introductory psych books mm -hmm. and we didn't look at the pictures. We just looked at the content mm -hmm. of whether the content had moved forward. Mm -hmm. Because it's an interesting area because, mm -hmm. you know, diets don't work. Yeah. We all know this. I mean, yeah. no, but it, actually there's no one who can argue that diets work mm -hmm. because they don't work. Mm -hmm. You either don't lose weight or if you lose weight, you regain it back. And so 95% of people five years later mm -hmm. will be at the same weight or a higher weight. Mm -hmm. That's what failure is. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. And in every other area of psychology, we're arguing for empirically demonstrated mm -hmm. uh, programs. But in terms of weight, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well, first of all, a lot of those people don't even want to lose weight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to be healthy. This is the idea of health at every size. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I'm a diabetic. Mm -hmm. But the, losing weight doesn't mm -hmm. really fix my diabe diabetes. That's like false. Mm -hmm. And also skinny people do have diabetes. Mm -hmm. So it's like a risk factor, but it's not a cause. It's mm -hmm. not clearly a cause. And I don't know if you know enough about diabetes, but, you know, the medicine you take for diabetes makes you gain weight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And actually, I think there's some people investigating this. I don't know that it's true, mm -hmm. but the possibility is that diabetes itself doesn't come as a result of weight gain, but is actually the preliminary mm -hmm. push toward weight gain. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. as you're developing diabetes, you're getting fatter and fatter, but mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. something about your metabolic mm -hmm. system that's yeah. creating that weight. But they're not looking at any of these possibilities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So anyway, this idea that um, psychologists really are profiting mm -hmm. right. from weight loss programs yeah. were implicitly very heavily involved. Yeah. And this is a serious ethical problem yeah. to be constantly helping people to lose weight when five years later they'll have gained it back. Yeah. Yeah. And not we don't have informed we don't have information. We don't tell them like, oh yeah, I can help you lose weight and I might even be successful, but sure enough, five years from now you'll be the same weight or fatter. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is what we tell people. And really it's not just in psychology. Obviously at a societal level, mm -hmm. there's some kind of mm -hmm. crisis. I don't know why we have the war on obesity and now we're waging war on obese children and mm -hmm. why we decided to direct all our attention at obesity. And I think the same thing, like sometimes obesity, not always, but sometimes obesity is really a way that people are coping with a lot of problems in their life. Mm -hmm. and this is what my Tai Chi teacher told me. Uh -huh. He was also a clinical psychologist with the training in Tai Chi, but he was saying like, well, there's many ways to react to, you know, trauma or distress in your life. Yeah. And really eating is one of the least harmful mm -hmm. compared to like drinking, taking drugs, beating up other people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. There's like a lot worse avenues. Yeah. Exactly.